Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Hey, folks, again. Slowly. Okay. What's up? It's the fourth it's one. F <laughs> We're just going to talk over each other. It's FN is someone bringing you useless Google information yeah. that you can try. <laughs> we lost that <laughs> NFT guy. He's no longer with us. He has a massive build out to deal with. So he's not joining. Yep. He's all, he's already topic making... is brought yep. to you by one of our viewers. Uh, he asked, or she asked, I don't know. Uh, would love to know how you break down your asset groups. I have two product categories in my e-com store, but I'm not sure if I should be breaking my asset groups out by uh, products or by demographics or by dot, dot, dot. So how do you break down your asset groups? Let's start. Put them down into pieces. <laughs> okay, we can that. Uh, <laughs> joke. We just we just lost um, half the viewers. Like, <laughs> I know, crappy joke. Okay, um, asset group <laughs> build out and deciding. Um, you have it's based off the way we like to do it. It's based off of the number of categories we can have, or the number of collection categories, collections, whatever you want to call them, and the number of audience signals we can pick out. So, let's say you you're running an e-commerce store that's in give me a niche. Nah. An outdoor niche, right? You're selling camping equipment, you're selling hiking equipment, and you're selling water sports equipment. Those are your three categories, right? So there's a lot of ways you can go about this. If you want to go a less aggressive build out, you could choose your three categories as your main three categories. And then you can find four to five audience signals of what we like to go for. And the ones we Depends typically on the go budget, for right? are let's start with that. Yeah. No, wait, let's do that. Let's do that first and then we'll talk budget too. Okay. Yeah. Um, stay tuned. There's a budget factor in this. <laughs> um, so let's say <laughs> it's like stay till the end of the video. There's more. <laughs> um, oh, what do you call it? So let's say you have those three categories, right? And then you have five audience signals. I think that's what we go for, like four to five audience signals per category. That's 15 asset groups for that. So we'll find yeah. out how so, many ad signals we have. <laughs> yeah, right. So we were talking out there. We said hiking, camping, and water, water sports. The ones we like to go for are all visitors as one. There's a caveat to all visitors that you want to check. Make sure you're using Google Ads all visitors and make sure you have a good conversion rate on those old visitors. Like 1% plus would be decent. Your competitors make a custom segment targeting competitor right. traffic is a good one. Like a point. So with the, uh, mm -hmm. before you apply all visitors, just go to your Google Analytics and check out all your visitors. If, you like, if you're running Facebook ads or like, let's say you have a good, conversion rate on your organic, direct Google ads, um, Pinterest, but you have um, a bad conversion rate on your Facebook ads or like programmatic ads, be sure to exclude those or be sure yep. to let uh, all visitors only coming from like organic, direct or something you like. Sorry, Dude, I switched from the all visitors from like all visitors from all website traffic to only Google ads all visitors. And I'll only use the Google ads all visitors if I have a good conversion rate on them. So I don't even look at the rest of the traffic. I just look at Google ads because that's the one I control. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's exactly to your point. Make sure it's good traffic that you're going to signal it with. What did I say? So we had all visitors, we had competitors. The next ones are in market. Go for the obvious ones and go for some not so obvious ones. And then we have affinity yeah, audiences. Same. Go for the... Yeah, go for the odd, go for the obvious ones first, and then don't go for the obvious ones. So, for example, if we're doing camping, look for look for an audience that's literally camping, right? That's the obvious one. But then again, it could also a non-obvious one would be someone that owns an RV or travels a lot, right? Someone that owns an RV in the sense that they probably go out if they're in an RV, they're probably camping out somewhere, guys. So, an RV would be a non-obvious one kind of situation. Stuff like that. So you want to find that connection between audience or like if you own, let's say you're selling food, right? Or some sauces, right? Well, this is, I won't say who, but let's say there was a client, we have a client that's selling sauces. One of the obvious audiences was condiments, 
right? The not so obvious, obvious audience was frequently dined out, which worked really well in this case, in this audience. So that's what I mean by go for obvious and not so obvious ones, but make sure they make sense. Don't just go for random ones, make sure they make sense. Yeah. So that's the affinity and in market. The last signal we like to use is customer list or your all converters. I always like using customer list over all converters because the all converters is completely dependent on your conversion tracking. If you don't have conversion tracking set up properly, that data is going to be garbage. It's no use to you. What right? about search intent? Like I like that the most, by the way. Search intent. Those are good too. Oh yeah. So that's a sixth one around. I forgot about that one. So I, you're getting I another you one. Like, we're gonna uh -huh. we're gonna know. We're gonna go up and down. We don't know our numbers. Yeah. <laughs> um the last one we like to another one we like to do is purchase and search intent for all our converting keywords that we have in a signal or the most relevant keywords we can find. And then brand terms as well, purchase and search intent. Those are just a list of audiences you guys can try and see what works. So that was the case for three, right? That's like that's like an overarching three, but you can get extra super mega duper segmented. <laughs> very segmented even further because right now we chose three categories and maybe like six seven audience signals but you can go even further down and split up your asset groups into even further categories so we started let's say we said camping right and under camping you have three other collections give me camping collections man um tents never never uh, camping, man. say i don't go camping much. Tents? let's say tents tents and uh, let's say a soul like, maybe heating supplies down. utensils yeah, let's just say you have three other collections un <laughs> under camping, right? Now, instead of using camping and three, let's just say you have three other collections under each of those main collections you have of water sports, camping, and what's the third one? Hiking. You can split based off of those three collections too. So initially we decided to go over three and three times seven, what's three times seven? 21 <laughs> asset groups. I gotta be this careful. This guy is a bug to buy the way. <laughs> No, <laughs> it's good at this kind of trash. But and then we let's say we split it up based off even further down. So we had three for each of those, which means we have nine collections in total and we have seven signals, right? So nine times seven is what? 63. So now you have 63 asset groups split out, right? So that's how you can kind of split up your asset groups based off of signals. But remember, it's one audience signal per asset group. This is where budget comes into play when you're deciding how many asset groups yeah, you, you want. Move on to the if you... Let's just keep pushing uh -huh. thing. but um, to add that to that point, we said three categories, but uh, recently we found out that um, having an additional old products oh, yeah. was good too. So we recently found that we, we always uh, start by categories times the ad signals, but recently when that, when that didn't work, we started all products uh, times um, ad signals, and it it literally saved that campaign, right? It showed me. It did. It performed really well. Yeah, it performed really well. But there was it's it's weird. I don't know how Pmax works, man. I mean, I do, but it's weird because it's different in every case. <laughs> um, just like, what what is he talking about? What is he telling us? He doesn't know what Pmax works. It's different in each case. If they're turning up his curtains. <laughs> Um, it's different in each case. Um, what was I going to say? You made me lose my train of thought here. Uh, <laughs> um, it's different in each case. Guys, it's just me now. FA has ditched us all. Okay, back to the topic. It's different in each case. We've had scenarios where all products have worked really well, and we have other scenarios where all products did not do so well. So that is also something you could test. Um, times that I've had it work, we've had it work more well in more cases than not work well when we added the old products asset groups into the Pmax campaigns. It's so that works well. So that's something you can add to as an asset group to have face points. Now to budget, or do you want to add something else up there? No, we can move on to the budget. Are we going to talk yeah. about what to do after that? No, they can watch the other videos. There's plenty. Okay. Right now, it's only asset groups build up. <laughs> so now there's budgets, right? Budget is something you got to take into consideration in respect to how many asset groups you want to build out. If you have 50 asset groups and you're running at it at a $50 a day, your PMAX campaign, it's not going to work. It doesn't have enough budget to test the different asset groups you launch. I mean, it will, but it will take very, very long. 
try try running a campaign for a dollar a day or try running all of all seven then what is it seven platforms whatever seven platforms of google let's move away from mm -hmm. sops because like a dollar yeah uh can mean nothing in some industry so it's it's yeah. all about your logic so let's say you give 50 dollars and you have 50 asset groups by the end of the month will you have enough examples in your listing groups like hey uh fa this is not working okay look at the listing groups how many clicks you have in that i mean 15 okay it means nothing <laughs> yeah so the basic th thing here is if you're going to create a lot of asset groups, make sure you have the budget for to get enough data on them if you don't have the budget create less asset groups choose nitpick at the ones you think are most relevant and then create those asset groups if you're running at fifty dollars a day i probably wouldn't create more than three to five asset groups kind of situation and even then it would take a month before you would start judging the data anything you want to add after um, uh, about the judging stuff, uh, Google is saying uh, wait for like six weeks right after that. This yep. is the first build up, not the changes. Like when you first build out a PMAX, you should give it like six weeks before judging it because it's like three to four weeks to let mm -hmm. it learn. Then plus your conversion lag and, you know, it's it's not going to start yep. greatly. It's going to start by picking okay. up the uh, low hanging fruits. Like it. it it will probably start with your brand. Then once it mm -hmm. exhausts that uh, ready um, users, it will mm -hmm. start to dip. Then it will try to learn with new users. And, and back up. this yep. point, you will have proper data. So wait for like six yep. weeks before you judge it. Six weeks before you judge it. And every time you make a change that's significant, even if it's a small change, you have to wait 14 days plus conversion lag before you can start judging your data again which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Pmax has been known to work in more cases than none. Yeah, it's different. Like when you when you increase the budget 20% inside of a smart shopping, it does not go into the learning phase. Like 20% is yeah. the amount you can change, but I don't see that's the case with Performance Max. It's too fragile. You increase it like 10 bucks, it just breaks. <laughs> It does. It goes back into a learning phase and then you're stuck waiting. So we're kind of trying this new thing. We're trying to do bulk edits where we watch and monitor the campaigns every day, every week, whatever, depending on what the uh, account is and how much attention it needs. And then we figure out what changes we want to make and then we make them all at once. So that way we don't toss it into learning every other day or every other week when we make those changes. Yeah, instead of taking actions, take notes like Take notes like, okay, I'm planning on killing this asset groups. I'm planning on uh, opening that up. I'm planning on changing the bidding strategy. And I think I should scale. Like, wait for that. Take notes. And after, like, uh, you have a proper list, just make the bulk changes once and get, yeah. get that over with. Yep. Guys, this is all stuff we do. So test it at your own discretion. Don't come at us. Be like, Osama, we tried this. It didn't work. You killed our campaign. <laughs> But this is all stuff we do. Everything we say here is stuff we do. It's still learning. Like I, I say this frequently, and I think Google will be mad at us. But Google doesn't know either. Like if you ask these questions to them, uh, they will have answers. But every person will answer differently. <laughs> yeah, they don't know what's going on. Nobody knows. Like this is literally a black box. We don't even yeah, have keywords right now. Do you have keywords inside? Oh, yeah. Max? It's gone. I checked this morning and all my keywords are gone. I was like, oh my God. Yeah. I think <laughs> this sucks. Either it is updating. I'm just, uh, I have two things in my mind. First, maybe the negative keywords are coming and they're testing out different stuff and they have to pull it back for, uh, for a little time. The second uh -huh. thing is, uh, <laughs> and this, I, I don't think this is the case, but, uh, People still brand viewers. <laughs> they complain a lot, and Google think, okay, mm -hmm. this is the this is literally the reason we didn't keep keywords inside of smart shopping. Let's go back to huh. that. <laughs> yep, yep. People giving people too much data, and then they're like, "This is wrong. I don't want to use this." Yeah. And then Google like take it away because people don't know what they're talking about. Yeah. Nice. 
think that's it for this video. What do you think? All right. I think that's enough. I don't want to let us know if you have any more video. questions. I, I have your video is like one hour and 20 minutes. It took me three days. Those are live. <laughs> yeah, that was live. <laughs> I think that was live. That took too long. All right, guys. We'll see you later. Bye. Right. Bye, guys. Bye. Ask more questions. Wait, before you go. I'm constantly looking for amazing people to come join our team. So if you're passionate about Google ads and you're passionate about customer success, please go to solate.com forward slash apply. And we'd love to see you as a part of the solutions 18. Also, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. It lets the YouTube algorithm know that we actually know what we're doing. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. We shoot a video every single day and I don't want you to miss out on any of it. Lastly, if you have questions, comments, concerns, confessions, or you just hate my face and my voice, go ahead and hit us up in the comments. We get very little human interaction, and even the heckling is something that I kind of get a kick out. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being subscribers if you're a subscriber. Don't forget to apply if you're interested in working at Solutions 8. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow.